Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Oh guys, so I am, I am seriously chasing autumn <sighs> this year. <laughs> I'm back in my reasonably local woodland and um, in today's video, I actually really want to chat about focus. Uh, main reason being is this, this is a hugely popular question that I get asked um, when I run my one-to-one -one workshop uh, workshops is uh, where to focus and how to focus. And two really, really important parts of landscape photography. I think I've found a composition already, so I'm gonna get myself set up. I'm quite excited about this one. Right, so I'm pretty happy with this composition now I'm set up. I just don't think the photograph is gonna be that good. Purely just because the conditions aren't ideal, we're getting too many gaps through the woodland canopy and the highlights from that sky are just a little bit distracting. Um, I think this is one to return to in fog, which is forecast for tomorrow morning actually, so I may come back. Um, now let's talk about focus. Before I show you how I focus, show you through my technique, I wanna talk about where to focus. As I'm sure you know, this is so important, it can make or break a photograph. If you don't get this right, it can ruin your image completely. Now, I've got two separate approaches, both of which, you'll be glad to hear, are really simple. This first one is the one that I use probably 90% of the time. And I will get my little red focal point, as it is on Nikon cameras anyway, and I will move him about one third of the way up from the bottom of the LCD screen. So it's about one third of the way into your scene as you're looking at it on the back of your camera. And then I will focus on whatever that is. In this case, see this kind of fallen branch, this fallen, um, yeah, branch that's leading us out into the composition here. It's pretty much him. And then I will stop down to something like F11. In this case, I'm at F14, because it suit, this suits this scene a little bit better. And then that's it. That will then give us a decent amount of focus from the front of your image all the way through to the background as we go deeper in. And that's what's worked for me for years. So my second approach as to where to position your focal point is one that I don't use quite as much. The one that I just mentioned where I focus one third of the way into the frame and then stop down is the one that I use so much, vast majority of the time. But this one, I wanted to stick in the video because it's so simple to start with but there are times when this is the easiest method to use, and that is to just focus on whatever, whatever you feel is the main subject in your frame. The only problem with this one is probably two things that I can think of. You've got to be really confident that there is a main subject in your frame. You know, I just thought about it with this scene. I thought I might focus on the oak tree. He's arguably the main subject in this, this composition, probably just because he's the bigger subject, but I decided against it in the end because of the second thing you've got to consider, and that is how much depth have you got in, in your frame, you know, without getting too confusing. Say, for example, you're just taking a straight shot of a lighthouse, easy example. You just focus on the lighthouse, but then if you've got rocks in the foreground and then some waves in the midground, and then your light, lighthouse off in the background, I'm sure you can understand then that you wouldn't focus on the lighthouse because the rest of the image would be out of focus, your foreground and your midground, so to speak, you know. Uh, but yeah, like I say, vast majority of the time I'm using this first approach where I'm focusing one third of the way into the frame. Hopefully it worked with this image. I think we might be getting a little bit of light. So I am going to continue wandering around. Hopefully I can find something else and then we can talk about how I focus. Ugh. So one thing that I'm trying to do when I'm out in the woodland a little bit more 
is come off the paths, man, and just sort of delve into the midst of the woodland and see what I find, you know, literally um, walk through all of the bracken, all of the mossy rocks, things like that. Um, and I think it's a no brainer, really. You just get so much more out of the woodland um, and you find so many new areas. Great for the photography. Now, before I move on, I'd like to say another big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Squarespace. Um, I really appreciate the support. If, the, if you've never heard of Squarespace, um, it's a wonderful platform that you can use to build your own website, which may uh, sound a little bit intimidating. Um, it was to me when I first decided to build a website, but I used Squarespace before they sponsored me and my experience could not be more positive. Um, it's great for us photographers if you'd like a bit of a portfolio, you know, with high quality images, that sort of thing. It's great to sell your image, images if that's something that you'd like to do at some stage. They've, they've got some great e-commerce options. Um, and yeah, all in all, uh, just very easy to actually build that website. That was the big thing for me. You know, I was intimidated, I was scared, but I wanted my own photography website so much and I'm so glad that I went through Squarespace. And yeah, that ease of use is something that you'll, you'll, you know, experience pretty much straight away. So if you'd like to give them a go, go to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner and make sure you use the offer code Henry Turner at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. It'll all be in the video description below if you wanna go and check them out. But yeah, another big thank you to them. And I am determined to try and find another nice composition. And then we'll chat about how I focus. So it's going a little bit dark now actually, so this is going to be the final photograph. Um, you just see me there playing around with two or three uh, trees, I couldn't quite get the composition to work. I did take a shot, I'll pop it up at the end of the video if it's any good, but very unlikely. Now I have found a photograph that I think is going to be quite decent. Um, and we're going to talk about how I focus as well, what my approach is, what my method is. Firstly I'll tell you what I spotted, we've got this wonderful looking silver birch tree just over my right shoulder here and his lower branches, of um, uh, the, the leaves are quite autumnal, the turning, the like this beautiful yellow color. And I've positioned the camera in a way that the background behind the birch tree is really dark, like black, super dark shadows. So it's very much one of them that's in the mind's eye. I'm gonna want the silver birch trunk and, and them yellow leaves to pop against that black, that dark background, you know? So I'm even thinking about post-processing. So I'm zoomed in about 150 millimeters, and you can probably see there, I'm actually doing this in um, a square crop. ISO 64, um, it's, it's nearly a two second exposure actually, and then F6.3, and then I'm gonna focus on the silver birch trunk, um, and I'll show you how I do that. Now, firstly though, I changed a couple of settings on the camera before, uh, or when I got it, before I started shooting with it, and that all that was, was to activate my back button focus. So this button here that you can see, that says AF on, that is my focus button, let's call it. And then my shutter button will only take photographs. You know how sometimes you sort of half press the shutter button and it'll focus? I've turned that off, that only takes photographs. So you can see how I've separated the focus from the shutter button. That's got, a, the focus has got its own dedicated button. So I am auto focusing, but I'll show you how. Um, this is a good example of one of the approaches I spoke about earlier, by the way, of, of where to focus. We've got a silver birch tree here, he's main subject, he's star of the show, so it's obvious in this case that I'm to focus on him. So I'll take my little red focal point and I will put it on where I wanna focus, which like I say, in this case, is the silver birch tree, then I'll magnify right in. Um, on this camera, I've got the OK button set to just zoom straight into like 400% or something. And then I will, and as I'm magnified in, I will then hit my focus button or my back button and then it will snap into focus. And this is brilliant because I am the fail safe. You know, the camera is focusing and the little box is going green telling me it's focused, but I can see it snap into focus as well because we're so magnified in. And then that's it. It's like man and machine working in tandem, guys. It's quality. And then I can take the shot. I always like to zoom back out for some reason. <laughs> and then grab the photograph and that's it. 
and I know that that is gonna be absolutely pin sharp. This is a method that I've used for years. It's never failed me. It's really, really good. So, like I say, I am auto-focusing, but it's all about that magnifying in using the live view or, you know, your viewfinder if you've got a mirrorless camera, um, because that is the fail-safe, you know? I'd probably happily just use the autofocus and just, you know, do that without magnifying in. But like I say, that's like a backup that I can see it snapping into focus as well. So quite excited about this image. Like I said, I hope you like it. Right, so it has got pretty dark in the old woodland. So uh, I thank you very much for tuning in to this week's photography video. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, if, if you could hit the subscribe button, if you want to hit the subscribe button, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. It means you'll be notified whenever I release stuff. And uh, it does help me out as well. So I'd really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Cheers for your support. And I shall see you on the next adventure. Out.